Hello and welcome. It's time for another colourful edition of A Splash of Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA, Society for All Artists. Let's dive straight in and take a closer look at some of the latest tips, tricks and techniques coming up on today's programme. Enthusiastic, experimental artist Alison Board uses watercolours to explore the power and structure of trees in today's Try Your Hand Out project. I'll be showing you a few more practical tips and tricks to help you develop your own watercolour techniques. Spellbinding SAA professional artist Sharon Hurst shares another one of her enchanting secrets for painting magical shadows and glazes. Popular pencil wizard Malcolm Cudmore conjures up some simple advice for seeing the world from a different perspective. And versatile artist Paul Beatty demonstrates the easy technique for adding texture to your own paintings. So without further ado, let's join versatile experimental artist Alison Board as she kicks off today's Try Your Hand Up project looking at how watercolour can capture the power and structure of trees. Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about working wet into wet with watercolour painting. And I've already got set up here a beautiful piece of 100% cotton watercolour paper. And we're going to do a little bit of a test to start with. So I've got my nice large sable brush. And we're going to think about playing chicken with our watercolour paper. And to play chicken means to get the surface just right so that we can drop colour into the wet area and it runs and we are in control of it rather than the other way around. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get straight on with it, put plenty of water on my nice big round brush and I'm going to wet an area. You might not be able to see it but it's really shiny at the moment and what we're looking for ultimately is for the shine to go off the paper. So I'm wetting it all over and keeping a really good eye on what's the wet part making sure that it doesn't puddle at all and making sure that the water goes on very even. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to mix up some colour. And today I'm going to use this rather lovely alizarin crimson colour. Nice, bright, pinky tone red. And we're going to mix up a nice big puddle of it and make sure that the colour is really strong. Now, the difficult part about wet into wet is making sure that it's not too shiny and it's not too wet so that when you drop the colour on, it doesn't starburst. Now, at the bottom, it's not quite right. And as you can see, when I put the colour on, it starts to run and gets completely out of control, which is not really the position that you want to be in with your watercolour. So let's just take that back. And I'm looking at it now, and it's got a rather lovely sheen to it, which I'm going to wait for it to go off. As soon as it's at the right stage, mixing up a little more colour, it's really good at the top here, you can sweep the colour on and it just disperses enough so that it's not running all the way down your paper, but it's not giving you hard edges to the colour either. So there you can see a rather lovely soft edged brush sweep. Now the great thing about working at an easel is that you can start at the top and you can work down as the shine goes off the paper. So there's my next stroke. A little bit too wet there, but that's okay. That's what your kitchen roll's for. You can always dab it up with your kitchen roll if you feel that it's running too fast. Load the brush up again. Maybe add a little bit more colour to it. Make sure that it's all coated all over, that you haven't got any lumps and bumps of colour. And I'm working my way down. There's my next sweep. And there you can see, just dispersing, not running, not all going south on the piece of paper just doing exactly what I want it to. Again, a little bit more water into my colour. You don't want it too dry. Coating all of the bristles of this lovely round brush. Now, that's still a little bit shiny, but we can sweep it in. There we go. And there you go again. Nice dispersal of colour, just blending out exactly as I want it to. And that's the thing that you're always looking for when you're working wet into wet. And that's what we're going to transfer to this main painting today. I'm working on a picture of some birch trees. I've got my reference material here. And I haven't copied the reference material exactly. I have just used it as an influence for my pencil drawing. Now, what I want to achieve with this painting is I want a lovely soft background. So it looks like we're looking through the trees through into foliage. And this is the kind of effect that we're after. Then when that has dried, we'll be able to paint over the top of it to get some nice hard edges for texture. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix up all my colours ready so that as soon as 
um, the, the water is at the state that I want it to be, I can just drop the colour straight in. So, first little puddle is going on. Make sure you wash out your brush really cleanly in between each stage. And um, for this first colour, I'm going to use yellow ochre. A lovely, warm, rich, woody kind of yellow. There it is going on again. Make sure you've got plenty of colour mixed up. One of the most important things when doing wet into wet is that you have plenty of colour mixed up on your palette. You don't want to get halfway through your painting and while this is all drying, you get in a panic about whether you've got enough colour on your palette. So there's the first colour all mixed up ready. That's the yellow ochre. I'm also going to use the alizarin crimson again and mix a lovely big puddle of that. It's one of my favourite colours. And then two other colours we're going to use today. We're going to use warm sepia, lovely rich tone brown. Going down, that's rather yummy. Going in there, again, making sure that there are no lumps and bumps of colour left on the palette, that it's just a nice puddle there ready to use. And then the last colour that we're going to use is black. Not a colour that a lot of watercolourists use, but I find very useful for making dark tones. And there we go, just a little bit of that. Now, because black was the last colour I used on my brush, very important that I clean it off. So there we go. You can always give your brush a really good wipe on your kitchen roll to make sure that you've got everything off that you need. Here we go then. I'm going to do the background of these birch trees and I'm going to wet it. Now, I'm going to paint negatively today, which means that rather than using masking fluid or anything to block out the trees, I'm going to paint the water up to my nice uh, trunks that I've got on here and then drop the colour in either side. So checking, I've got a little bit more water at the top because I'm working at an easel today. It sometimes happens that all of your water runs south and it's quite important that it's even. But because this is the easy stage, just putting the water on, it doesn't matter how much you put on. You can go back in, you're not damaging the paper at all, and making sure that it has a really lovely shine to it. So, dropping in the water. There I can see it's nice and even, there are no puddles. There's a few at the bottom, but we can attack those with some kitchen roll in a minute. Adding in the water. There you go, just using my kitchen roll just to keep that under control. Now is the, the point I need to play chicken with it, exactly as I did on this exercise here, waiting for the shine to go off it. And because we are trying to simulate foliage in the background, I'm going to have my colours all ready on my brush. There's my yellow ochre. That's going to be the first colour that I drop in. And I can now start at the top because I can see that the shine has gone off it and it's ready to go. So using a variety of brush marks so that I get a variety of foliage shapes. Dropping in the colour, there you can see it's just dispersing ever so slightly and I am in control of it, not the other way around. There we go, a little bit at the top. If you are painting negatively, make sure that you paint right up to your shape. Don't leave a halo all the way around it. Otherwise, you'll end up with some very funny looking backgrounds. Use your kitchen roll to keep control of that water at the bottom. There you go, that's perfect, absolutely perfect state that paper is in now. So painting right up to my tree trunks. And I'm going to move on to my next colour now. I'm going to leave the yellow ochre on the brush because then when I add the alizarin crimson in, it means I'll get some nice orangey tones. There we go, dropping in that lovely rich red adding my little shapes, making sure I use every part of the brush, both the tip and that lovely body, the belly of the brush that's usually called with the sable. Adding a few bits and pieces here and there. Try not to create what I call the rainbow effect by putting all yellow at the top, all red in the middle and then all brown at the bottom. Try to vary where you put your colours. Some will disappear into the background like those have, some will really stand out. But that's the joy of wet into wet, that you get that variation of colour. Again, leaving those colours on my brush, moving straight into the brown, adding that back in. That's a little bit too wet there, so it is running ever so slightly, but that's OK. That's half the fun. Dropping in the colour, working nice and quickly, so I don't think about it too much and I don't poke it about. Dropping in that brown. There we go, back up into the yellow. And now I can move on to the black. Be careful with black, because it is a very strong colour. 
And if it does worry you ever so slightly, then mix it in with your brown. Drop in that nice dark colour right to the bottom where all that dense foliage would be. Oh, I missed a bit there. Let's fill that in. There we go. That's better. And then you get a nice soft look to it. There we go. So use your kitchen roll. Mop up the few little excesses that you don't want. Keep an eye on it. And if there are puddles that you don't like and you're thinking, OK, I really don't like that bit, you've got time. Use your kitchen roll. Bunch it up into a ball so it doesn't make a hard edge. Dab it back into that paint. And then you will recreate some lovely textural foliage type effects. There we go. Just touching it, keeping an eye on it all of the time to make sure that it's not, not doing anything untoward. And it's still at a stage where you could alter it if you wanted to. You could still pick up colour if you're thinking, oh, it's not quite dark enough or it's not quite bright enough. And because you have kept it all under control, you can go back in, add a few little touches here and there, and it's still safe to do so. Because you've kept it under control, because it's nice and even, you will be able to alter it as you see fit. And there we go, just a few last touches with the kitchen roll. So I need to leave that to dry now, and it needs to be fully dry before I can work back into it. So join me later in the programme where you'll see the next stage of my painting. Great enthusiasm, lovely wet into wet techniques. Thanks, Alison. We look forward to seeing the finished result later on in today's programme. Well, folks, down for a quick break, but join us in part two, when I'll be showing you a few more practical tips to help develop your watercolour painting. And spellbinding SAA professional artist Sharon Hurst will be sharing another one of her enchanting secrets for painting magical shadows and simple glazes. See you after the break. <laughs> 